oh that was bad so welcome back to Hulderotten and welcome back to a channel a beer channel that it has deep nordic roots and want to hop along for a trip northwards just subscribe and join the trip my friend so today i'm going to talk about something that's been close to my heart for a long time and one of the most typical things to talk about when we talk about traditional brewing at least here in the nordics and that is my friend the juniper and the juniper and the juniper and why it has been used and how so these are junipers this is one type of juniper there's more than 50 types of uh, junipers in the world and yeah they're grown in the northern atmosphere all over the world almost uh, in some sort or another and they're pretty much the same with the hard needles these are new this year's world so they're often grown southwards uh, because that is south and it's pretty open to the south there that's Sweden over there there's another point why I uh, why I mention Sweden because this is the border but also this is sea level so these junipers are low uh, low country low land junipers and they're different than the junipers that grow on the mountain and that's a point here in Norway because they're almost the same species I'm going I'm going to talk more about that another time so junipers are antiseptic uh, that's why they've been used in uh, home brewing it's been used or we still use them really in two different ways at least here in Norway and but farmers farm house brewers traditional brewers here in Norway still use junipers and I'm gonna talk more about this later if people are really interested because there's plenty of reasons why we have used junipers and why and how. And some of them have berries. Not this one. But berries, at least green berries, and they are used in gin production I think they're not used at all in beer brewing but some of the blue and purple berries are in the good olden days when we uh, brewed in wood wooden um, in wooden buckets and uh, and had wooden equipment you couldn't boil it uh, and there was some difficulties yeah. there's plenty of challenges there but if you have a wooden bucket with a hole in the bottom and fill up with junipers in the bottom you can use it as an, uh, a mash tun like a filter it has a, like a false bottom so you just put them they just put them in the bottom of the bucket and fill it up and put the grain on top and open the hole in the bottom so it would pour through so uh, it's a pretty easy way of having a mash basket and to have a system that's helping you so we don't need to sort off the, the mash and the grain and sort it off so it's a way of filtering it um, some still use that technique in Stural we're gonna make uh, Stural's Earl the smoked ale traditional smoked ale from Norway uh, this technique has been used a lot so I've been trying this also putting it as a filter and putting the grain on top and having it in the mash but there's another technique and that's juniper infusion and that's like making tea out of the um, junipers uh, making tea out of it like having it at 70 degrees Celsius for a couple of, couple of hours or uh, I heard people uh, having it overnight and uh, using it as their mash, mesh, mash, using it as their brewing water. It will get a really nice brown hue to it, the water that is, or the tea, or yeah, the, the juniper infusion. 
I use that also, I really like that technique and it will give some, some other taste, not that bitter. If you boil them, you will get a really bitter taste. And if you're extracting over long time at high temperatures, you will get another bitterness to it, a sharpness to taste from the junipers. So that is the two ways we're still using in Norway. The juniper infusion and having it in the mash tun. I will be on the northern route for a while, so just hop along. And I would really appreciate if you took your beer bowl and just smashed the like button. It would help me out a lot. And yeah, I guess that's it. See you next time then.